Good morning. The Lord be with you. Blessings and greetings to you in the name of Jesus. It's good to be with you. Good to worship with you this morning. A um, couple quick announcements for you before we, we get into the worship service. Um, obviously, if you, you look up front, you see that Joe's on the, on the organ. Uh, Lois is uh, continuing to, to uh, have uh, some difficulties. Um, she's on the up and up, but it's just taking a little bit longer than... Um, than she had hoped, so please uh, keep her in your prayers, and uh, she should be back with us by, by next weekend is the, is the prayer. So um, Joe was willing to play, so thank you, Joe, uh, for doing that. Uh, I was on my way out to Camp Pioneer when I reached out to Joe, um, so I didn't have the hymns in front of me, so I said, Joe, pick whatever you want to play today. So the hymns are different. Um, so there's three hymns up on the board. They don't match what's in your bulletin. Um, so just, uh, you know, just, just make note of that. Um, on the announcement side of, of things, um, just a very, very special word of, of thank you uh, to uh, Cheryl Bowling and uh, Dana Besh. Uh, they worked really hard uh, to pull this picnic together yesterday. And um, I think at the, at, the, at the peak of things, I didn't get out there till about 5 o'clock, but at the peak of things, they said there was about 71 people out there. Um, it was a beautiful, a beautiful day. I, the, the wind had been kicking up a little bit throughout the day, but as the, as the day went on, um, by evening, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, so um, thank you, thank you, thank you to them for, um, for putting all of that together. Um, I had called them, I, I mentioned this yesterday, I had called them at one point because I was watching the bulletin board. And I said, you know, I sent him an email is what I did. I didn't call. I sent him an email. I said, hey, you know, there's only like, like 11 people signed up for this picnic. You, you just want to call it? And they said, oh, no, absolutely not. We have our own list going. So they were, they were calling people on the side. I had no idea, right? And they were inviting them to, to come. And it was, that was the, um, that was the, uh, the outcome of their, of their calls. So... Uh, beautiful day, but much, much thanks to them for, for pulling all of that together and for everybody who, who came out. Um, we uh, are, are, of course, collecting uh, those back-to-school items. This is the last week for that. Those will be turned over next week. Um, so if, you, if you'd like to participate, uh, once again, you know, all, that, all, that, all the details for that are printed right there in your worship bulletin. We're moving in the direction of fall, uh, fall programming here. It's hard to believe. Um, I uh, kind of uh, just worked through a, a, just a little thought and vision for ministry as we're moving into this, this new season, uh, and I came up with the idea of connected, um, and you know, we're connected to Christ, we're connected to community, and we're connected to a cause, so that's kind of what I, I, I was building on, um, and uh, I'm hoping that that will come to life as we, as we move through ministry in this fall season and, and beyond. Um, but anyway, we're moving in that direction of programming. So um, Sunday school, a.k.a., well, a BLAST, a.k.a. Sunday school, will be taking off as of, what, September 10th, right? September 10th is going to be the kickoff of that. And that's also, um, we sent out postcards this, this past week uh, to all the, the members highlighting this whole connected idea. Um, so we're hoping that uh, September 10th will, will be a sort of bring bring your, your friend or somebody that you know, bring them. Help them to become connected uh, to community. So if you know somebody that's looking for a church family, uh, if you um, have relatives that have been distant from St. John's, um, try to get them here that day uh, just to, 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 to bring that connection back. All right? Um, but all of that is going to kick off on September 10th, and then we'll move from there. Um, all of the adult programming will start up. Confirmation is starting on September 10th. Confirmation is going to take place on Sunday mornings now. Um, so for those of you who join us in the adult Bible class on Sunday mornings, downstairs, just keep in mind it will be every other week now. Um, I do have dates available, so I'll get that to you. Okay? All right, that's enough, I think. You think so? I do too. Yeah, all right. Let's uh, stand and we'll, we'll join in our opening hymn which is hymn number 444.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us of all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. We pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please have a seat. First reading is from Genesis, chapter 45, verses 1 through 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers, and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my fa father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept, and Benjamin embraced him weeping. 
and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading is from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 and 2 and 29 to 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel? For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so that they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel is taken from St. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verses 10 through 28. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the, king, the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them, leaving that place. Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together now in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please have a seat. We'll join together in singing hymn number 512. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. The text that I chose for the sermon this morning is taken from the first reading, uh, Genesis uh, chapter 45, and particularly these words, and now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. So last week I, I talked to you about uh, cruises, right? And I, and I talked about how much I love cruises and not just because of the uh, buffets. Um, but I, I, I talked to you about cruises and, and how, how beautiful the sea is and how it, it, it takes you away and it, and it puts you to a place where you really uh, can respect and, and appreciate the, the beauty of, of God's work in creation. Um, and, and we experienced that yesterday at Camp Pioneer too, by the way, uh, when the sun was just over the lake, just beautiful. God is truly the master 
master artist. There is no question about that. Um, but I also talked to you last week about the storms. You know, the storms in life and how, and how they can come at us just out of nowhere and pound us from every single direction. And, and those disciples, they were feeling that on that boat as they were crossing the sea last week, right? And as, as they were experiencing that, there comes Jesus. He meets them in the storm and he brings a peace unlike anything. Well, today I'm going to talk to you again about storms, but this is a different kind of storm. It's a storm that can rage within families if it's not taken care of. So if you've ever gone on a cruise, you've been through a certain exercise when you first board that ship, the lifeboat drill, right? Been on a cruise, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, the lifeboat drill, it usually happens right as you get on the ship, right before you leave that port. Um, before you've even learned your way around the ship, you receive those instructions to go to a certain designated area located on the deck. And it's broken down, right? The deck is broken down into these different sections. And there you're met by these crew members uh, who may be waiters, they might be cleaners, clerks, or even casino dealers. But for those brief few moments, they're in the life-saving business, aren't they? In the event of a dire emergency on their ship, they've been trained to escort your little group of people over the rail and into the lifeboat. Now, if I remember correctly from our first cruise, I was just sharing this yesterday, by the way. We went in, in 2003, right after we were married, we went to the Bahamas. Uh, and uh, anyway, if I remember that first cruise, we actually had to go through a physical drill. Uh, we had to go to the muster station, and, and they taught us how to put the life jackets on and all that good stuff. But now, it's different. It's all on your phone. Yep, it's all on your phone or on the TV in your room. It's, what is it called? It's called e-muster. That's what it's called, right? So you check in, you get into your room, you gotta watch this little video, right? It even has the horn tones so you can, you can understand the, 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 the emergency tones, right? And then, and then you make your way to your muster station and they scan your card. They know you went through the safety drill. That's how it goes now, right? But I remember, I remember how it was done a long time ago. They took you step by step, right, in the event that there was an emergency. Nevertheless, as much as you don't want to think about that ship in an emergency, as much as you want to push it down to the farthest parts of your mind, it's a really good thing to know the safety procedures, right? But what's more than that is it's really good to know that you have crew members who are trained as life preservers. Today's lesson from the book of Genesis is about a life preserver, someone who's been called to preserve life, but in a different way. This, this life preserver, this, he isn't a member of the Royal Caribbean Friendly Crew. His name is Joseph. Now, there's only two Josephs in the Bible that we suggest that are of notable character. Joseph, the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Joseph, the son of Jacob and Rachel. Now, of course, no father, no father is supposed to have favorites, but Jacob, but I'm sorry, but uh, where am I? Yeah, but of Jacob's, uh, but of Jacob's twelve sons, his youngest son Joseph was the favorite, wasn't he? He was the favorite of Jacob, and he was so favored by Jacob that he even gave him what? A coat. The coat. That coat was lots of colors, wasn't it? And you know what? what it, why? Why? Why the colors? Anybody? Did you ever wonder? Why was the coat of all these different colors? Because it stuck out. Nobody wore colors. Yeah, it stuck out, right? And, it was, and it, was, it was really kind of meant to be understood that it was, uh, it was a place of favor. Now, to the other brothers, what did you say, Ed? And it was long. 
What was different about this coat to the other brothers, though? They would have had a coat, but it was a work coat, right? It was a work coat. So this coat stood out. And, and for, for Joseph, of course, having this, he was the youngest too, right? Um, and having this coat, though, don't you think if you had that coat and you had, you had 11 siblings, maybe you'd puff your chest out a little bit? <laughs> Go to work, right? <laughs> Have a good day, right? Well, he was the favorite. He was the favorite. This jacket, it wasn't this work jacket like given to the other brothers. Instead, it was a work of art. It symbolized favor, not labor. It was made to stand out, and it did so much so that it would ignite a mess of emotion in that family system and lead to a whole bunch of dysfunction. Long story short, Joseph's 11 brothers, they get sick and tired of this favoritism, don't they? And they're tired of Joseph's bratty ways. So what do they do? They throw him in a pit. They sell him off to some slave traders. He's as good as dead. And to get, to get away with it, you remember what they did? They soaked that beautiful little jacket and some blood, all right? And they took that jacket to dad, and they said, oh, he was eaten by this really nasty beast. Fast forward now. A decade or two later, a famine was in the land, and so Jacob's sons, they head off to Egypt to work out a deal with the Pharaoh for some grain. And here's where it gets good. Who was Pharaoh's number one advisor? Joseph. <coughs> Joseph was as good as dead to his brothers way back but there he is alive, and he's prospering. Now, what would you have done if you were Joseph? What would you have done? Be honest. Yep. So you're in this position of authority, right? You're Pharaoh's number one guy, and here your brothers stand before you, and they're in desperate, desperate, desperate need. You'd get the best of it, wouldn't you? I'd play it a little bit too. Before, before I really went to the extreme, I, I'd play around with them. Maybe dabble a little grain in front of them or something. I don't know. You know but, but you'd want revenge, wouldn't you? The, the, the sin side of us would say, we want revenge. Those 11 brothers, they betrayed him. And there they were standing before him. There they were at, at his mercy. And being honest, we'd want to one-up them, make a mockery of them, maybe even turn our back on them, go back to that land undone. But being real, responding that way, it's only going to lead to more regret, hurt, separation, and disappointment, isn't it? Truth is, at some point, we have to put the hurts away. We have to break that cycle if we don't, it eats away at us, it consumes us, it weighs us down, it hinders us from seeing the possibilities of life. And sometimes the reality is we have to be the first to take that step. Sometimes we have to let it go for our sake. And I suppose that day, Joseph was at a sort of crossroad, wasn't he? And what did he do? In faith, he swallowed his pride. He trusted God's way over his own. Listen again to this remarkable line from our Old Testament reading. God sent me before you to preserve life. Life. Life, not darkness, separation, revenge, or envy, but life. Is it possible after all of those years? Yes. After all of those years, Joseph saw and realized that there was something better. Like the crew at the muster station on the ship, he saw that his bigger role in the sea of life was not to work, not the work that he did for Pharaoh, but his role was to preserve life. 
Not just the preservation of human life, but life as it was intended by God. Through the act of forgiveness and reconciliation, you see God's promise given to Joseph's father, Jacob, the, the, the promise of nations and kings coming from him. Go back to Genesis chapter 35. That would continue. That would continue through the generations all the way to Jesus, our Jesus. Because the other Joseph was a descendant, wasn't he? It would continue on all the way to our Jesus, our brother, our friend, who was the greater example, right? I want to take a a second. When you read the Old Testament, and I know some of you, many of you are doing this, when you read the Old Testament, from here on out, read it from the lens of Jesus, and it'll blow your mind, won't it? Because you will see how God is pointing you to Jesus all the way back in the Old Testament. What we see in Joseph, that that forgiveness, that reconciliation that took place, isn't that exactly what Jesus has done for you and me, brothers and sisters who have betrayed him by sin? He saw the bigger picture. He saw God's will and the need for forgiveness and reconciliation. He went the way of the cross. He suffered. He died so that we might live that right relationships would be restored and life would be preserved. In that much greater way, Joseph pointed to Jesus who would fulfill God's covenant promise of life, life with him forever, and a a right life right here and right now for you and me, one that's built and shaped by that forgiveness and reconciliation of Jesus You see, my friends, this same forgiveness and reconciliation that we see with Joseph is for us to share too. God intends for us to receive forgiveness, but he also intends for us to extend it and share it. You and me are being used too to be a muster station, if you will, to be, be, to be preservers of life through forgiveness. Is that easy? No. But is it possible? Yes. Like Joseph, there's much dysfunction in our lives too. There's even dysfunction, we have to admit it, even in our families. There's envy sometimes. There's been revenge. There are hurts and disappointments and even regrets The hard truth to swallow is that every one of us have contributed in some way, and not one of us is better than the other. No one innocent. But my friends, the story doesn't have to end as maybe you're expecting. The weight and the the heaviness of past hurts, it doesn't have to be the final say. A, A wise person once said, Forgiveness is when you set a prisoner free and then you realize that that prisoner was you. Forgiveness leads to life. It leads to freedom. Sometimes we have to forgive another. Sometimes we have to forgive for our own sake. True forgiveness, it doesn't condone wrong. It doesn't forget Forgiveness, though, freely and openly acknowledges past hurts. But then it moves on, seeking ways to preserve and enhance life. If we don't let it go, we're stuck. The closing of a famous prayer of St. Francis reads like this, For it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. We have to put it to death in order to experience that new life. What burden of anger or resentment are you carrying? What are you carrying around today? Because reality is we all do at times. How long have you nurtured it, even cherished it and held on to it? Maybe it's time to let that anger go, for very likely it's causing you more pain and anguish than anyone else. Today is the day 
Today is the day to forgive one another, to forgive for self, to be reconciled, to live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to please stand. Let's join together in speaking the offertory. O Lord, giver of life and source of freedom, we know that all we have received is from your hand. You call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Help us to always use your gifts wisely and teach us to share them generously. May our faithful stewardship bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen. So in addition to those who are printed in the prayers in your worship bulletin, please say a special word of prayer for Dawn Brennan and her family as they mourn the death of her sister-in-law, Jean. Uh, that would have been Chief Brennan's twin sister. Uh, please keep them in your prayers. Uh, last week we prayed as she experienced a, a heart attack, and it did please our Lord to call her home, and uh, what a happy reunion it was, must have been. I've been back and forth in some text messages with Dawn throughout the week, and um, there is a beautiful bond between twins, and I've come to realize that uh, with my own two. And um, that bond that Chief Brennan and Jean shared was, was beautiful and tight all through this life, and of course, we point our hope now to that beautiful bond that is, is for them uh, as they are now saints in light forever and ever. But we know the heaviness of your heart, Dawn, and um, we certainly hold you in our prayers too. We pray for friends of Seal Roll, uh, her friends Bill, Art, Gina, and Emily who have health issues. For Jeff Adragna, that's the, uh, the son of, of uh, late Carol Adragna, who used to play uh, the keyboard for us on Saturdays, longtime member. Um, he has some health concerns. For Jeff Best, as he recovers from surgery, it's good to see Jeff in the, in the back of, of uh, the church. Uh, we're glad that your healing is going well today. Uh, we also pray for Kathy Pinozny's great-grandson, Noah, uh, who's having some health issues as well as Kathy Pinozny. Um, Kathy's having some health concerns as well and will be undergoing some tests this week. Um, for Colleen Hurley and her family at the death of her dad. For Art Benson, who took a fall. Um, for, let me see, I gotta get this straight here. Uh, a friend of Betsy Soodle, uh, the mother of a friend of Betsy Soodle. Her name is Mrs. Miller. She's having some significant health issues. For Kathy Pinozny's grandson, Nick, and his father, 
uh, who have gone missing in China. Uh, so please keep them in your prayers and uh, the family in your prayers as you can only imagine the heaviness uh, of their hearts. We pray for safety. Uh, for Karen Zelen, uh, Karen uh, is uh, experiencing some shingles and uh, uh, the associated pains of that. And last, uh, lastly, for uh, my, my very dear, dear friend, my, my best, one of my best friends, John Huey. Uh, John suffered a heart attack yesterday morning. Um, he's hospitalized, everything is going well. Um, but uh, as I'm understanding, uh, God in his grace gave signs. Uh, it was the widow maker from what I understand. But, um, but John was able to uh, react to those signs and was get, uh, in the hospital uh, quick enough that uh, his life was preserved. So all praise to God for that. Uh, we pray for his continued healing and uh, we pray for Michelle and the kids uh, as these are trying times for them as, as well. Let's pray. Dear Father, we are so slow to see each other as your beloved children. Soften our hearts to lead people different from ourselves into Jesus' presence. Help us to discover that at the foot of his cross, we are truly brothers and sisters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fashion your church into your house of prayer upon the earth. By your Holy Spirit, show it how to rightly welcome people into its midst. Through your word and holy sacraments, draw many close to Jesus. Let them receive his promised mercy, forgiveness, healing, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There are many who refuse your mercy, reject your son, and persecute your servants. Forgive them and soften their hearts. Strengthen Christians who suffer because of Jesus to witness to him with humility, boldness, and steadfast endurance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive and heal the hatred and violence that destroys peace, justice, and goodwill. Teach our rulers to diligently seek after the good of everyone entrusted to their care. Enable them to follow your will. Increase understanding, cooperation, and kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the school year starts, we pray for students, parents, teachers, and aides. We pray especially today for Trinity Lutheran Church. Let them teach, learn, and share all useful knowledge and cherish truth, wisdom, and righteousness. Bless seminaries and Christian colleges and schools with faithfulness to Jesus, love of neighbor, and the practice of virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Clothe with righteousness and wisdom all your servants who risk their lives in defense of life and liberty. We pray for those in the military, for police officers, firefighters, dispatchers, and all first responders. Be their stronghold, shield, and refuge. Make them models of justice, integrity, and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for our youth. Give strength to our youth and our youth group as they gather, pursue, and explore your will for their lives. Bless the leaders with wisdom, patience, and new insight as they seek to cultivate loving community grounded and rooted in Christ Jesus. Open the hearts of the young people there present so that they might see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and walk with you more nearly day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord God, you bring healing to hearts that are heavy, to those who are sick, to those who are grieving, you bring hope. Today we bring before you the prayers of all people, the needs of all people. We especially pray for Dawn and her family as they mourn the death of Jean, but as they rejoice in the brand new life that belongs to her now. We pray for those friends of Seal, Bill, Art, Gina, and Emily, for Jeff, for Jeff Best, who's recovering from his surgery, for Noah and for Kathy, for John, Colleen and her family, for Art and Mrs. Miller, for Nick and his father, and for Karen. We pray for all of those who are printed in our worship bulletin, our friends, our family members, and anybody else that we name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord of the Sabbath, we rejoice in this holy day, a day of rest and gladness, a day of connectedness. How desperately we need to hear your word and how important it is for us to break from our day to day, to rejuvenate and strengthen our souls for all that is ahead. We praise you for this faith community and all who call St. John's their home. We too give you thanks for our family of faith, which extends beyond these walls, especially our radio listeners and live stream viewers. As the world tugs on our hearts and demands more of us, help us to faithfully carve out time week after week to be right here. For those who have been away or for those who have developed habits that keep them from making the Sabbath about Jesus, open their eyes to see the importance of Christ-centered faith in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O Father, and grant all that glorifies you and builds up your people. This we ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have in mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Amen, come Lord Jesus. We pray together now as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we receive God's peace into our hearts and our minds, we extend that peace to one another in whatever way you're comfortable. You may be seated.
Lord, to your body and blood, strengthening you and keep you in the true faith from now to life everlasting. Depart in his joy and peace. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. My paths is yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us the strength of this meal and faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please stand for the benediction. My dear friends, receive now this blessing. May the Lord go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.
Thank you.